Oh my gosh, my camera looks awful this morning. I'm not sure what the problem is, but uh, it's so dark I can't see it. I don't know if you guys... <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh my gosh, Zachary. <laughs> Why does it look like that? It looks super dark. Um, I'm gonna light it up. Just, I can't tell. Oh, Jesus. I don't know if I overexposed it or what. I hope you can see it. I hope it turns out great. Anyway, good morning, everybody. <laughs> um, all right, so... Oh, gosh. I, look, I hope it's coming out right. I think because the sun is shining in the camera, it's making it dark. Um, mm, anyway, um... Yeah, like I said, good morning. I hope everyone has been doing well. I hope everyone had a great weekend. I know it's Tuesday. I think it's Tuesday. Yeah, it's Tuesday. Um, so, today, um, I want to talk about choices. The choices we make and the responsibility that we have. Um, yeah. The responsibility that we have uh, to the choices that we make, we have a responsibility to those things and to the people that are involved in the choices that we are making. Um, and so I can't say where this came from, but it, it's um, it's a pretty good example. Uh, so, all right. So there's a situation where <clears throat> um, there is this mother and her son. And they are, um, this, uh, they're both struggling, um, just consciously or mentally, however you want to say it, uh, they're just struggling. And there was a suggestion made to the, the mother to kick the son out, to just kick him out because the son was being unruly, um, and they're just causing a lot of, uh, stress and, um, just a lot of stress going on um, for the for the for the mother, and so the mother decided to take the advice of those who suggested to kick that her son out, and she did that. And what happened was, within a short period of time, and I do mean a short period of time, uh, the son ended up uh, with. Um, how should I say? Uh, people who were who did not have his best interests at heart, and um, and ultimately ended up murdering someone. And now this person is uh, uh, not going to be out for a very long time. And um, and now the mother has to live with that that decision, that choice that she made. Um, but it wasn't made solely on her own. And this is this is the problem. This is the problem when we give advice to other people um, not understanding. And what I mean by that is the people who gave her their advice were in a very low state of consciousness, meaning they did not they did not understand and they didn't have love. That's that's the basis of their low consciousness. So the basis of all low consciousness is a lack of love. That's what that means. It's very simple. You know, I, I talk about, you know, the, the God's laws and principles and things like that, but they're very simple to understand. They're not complicated. And so someone had once made um, a comment on my video saying, you know, uh, you know, people make things so complicated. I think it was my QHHT video or the event video. These people make things so complicated. And it complicated meaning the things that I was talking about, they, they said it was complicated, like I was complicating things. But I didn't make that stuff up. I was just exposing the things that are happening. But the, the issue is people have a low level of consciousness. And when you have a low level of consciousness, you don't understand. And if you don't understand, you can't have compassion. This is why I say it's a lack of love. Because there's no understanding, there's no compassion. And when you have love, you have more understanding, you have more compassion. So... You know, these individuals gave this woman advice and she kicked her son out and he got involved with the wrong crowd 
Um, I'll just say it used to be, I don't know if it still is, it used to be the red and it used to be the blue. And so they were, that person got involved with that and ended up murdering someone. And now that person is facing some time. Now, like I said, the mother has to live with this and it's very difficult because now the mother is feeling responsible for the actions that her son has taken. And though she is not responsible for the, the actions he has taken because he has free will, she's not responsible for that. But she is responsible in terms of, she had the same lack of consciousness that the people had who gave her their advice initially. And this is what happens when you have people who are unloving, or I should say have a lack of love within their soul. They make these decisions not understanding, not having any compassion for the other person. The only, the only thing they're really focused on is trying to stop whatever pain is being induced at the time. So whatever pain from anything external that is being induced to the person... The only thing they're concerned about is trying to stop it. This is a problem because when you just try to stop the effect, you're not dealing with the cause. And this is a, this is this entire event, uh, this entire situation is based on trying to deal with the effect and not the cause. Now, if you were dealing with the cause, you would try to ask or try to find out why is this person being unruly? What is going on with this person that they, they're, they're experiencing what they're experiencing? Because all people who are in pain are wounded in some way, shape, or form. And generally, it's emotionally. And so when someone is like an animal, when an animal is wounded physically, you, they can't, they, they're not thinking about, you know, oh, let me walk up to you and, you know, eat out of your hand. No. They're ready to fight. They're ready to pounce. They're ready to do anything to stop the pain. And if they feel that you're a threat they'll attack and this is how people are and so you know people who people don't want to be bothered with things or with people and situations so they they try to come up with the the quickest remedy possible but in actuality it's not a remedy at all it's just worsening the problem uh so like i said you know this people gave some advice and you know she took she took that advice and now this whole situation happened now i'm not saying this wasn't going to happen but what's important is these individuals are responsible for the advice that they have given. And though they may not be as responsible here on earth in terms of man's uh, um, determination, but in terms of God's determination or the way God sees it, they are responsible. And years and years and years and years down the line, because these people are young who gave, who gave this advice. Uh, and the person who they gave the advice to is much older, um, double in age. So, <clears throat> oh my God, this, this situation is so crazy. So, you know, later on, you know, when these younger people who gave that advice die, they're going to have to um, ask for forgiveness for what they have done because they gave advice based on not having love, based on not caring about the individual, based on not caring about, you know, what was going to happen or what's going on with the other person or you know how can we remedy how can we help both people see it wasn't about they didn't give a, a, a darn about the son they just wanted you know the mother to be okay but in their mind for the mother to be okay they just wanted the stress to stop from the son but that's not how you handle situations how you handle a situation is find out what the problem is so that it automatically stops. You correct the cause. You don't deal with the effect because any every time, every single time you deal with an effect, whether it's in your life or someone else's life, it's going to worsen if you try to block what's going on. So what was happening is the mother and the son were having an interaction. They were having a law of attraction interaction. So whatever problems that they had in their family was passed on and it was presented to them so that they can work on the emotional injuries that's within their soul and that's all they had to do like they just had to have an understanding and some compassion for one another and understand that you know what was going on within their soul like everything was fine like God's plan or I should say God's laws were in action that's what was going on I think I should not do this so quickly hold on a sec sometimes these people try to jump out if it's moving too slow um, 
So, see, I told you, and I told you. Um, but he didn't jump out too fast, and I have a half a mile to go, so I have a little room to get over. So, um, you know, God's God's action plan was already in place, showing them a law of attraction that was basically dealing with emotions. Like that was the extent of what was going on. But then what happened is you had other people who came in and interfered, came in and interfered, and gave advice not caring about the sun at all. And when I say not caring about the sun, I mean not caring about the other individual and what they were going through. They just cared about the person they were interacting with, which was some mother. So they gave some ill advice. And this ill advice is something that they're going to have to pay for because their advice has led to a chain of events. And they are responsible for that. Now, they're not, they're, and this is the thing because there are, everyone is responsible for their own actions. So the people who gave the advice are responsible for their own unloving actions. The mother is responsible for her actions. And the son is responsible for his actions. Now, we are all responsible for our own free will actions. We have to deal with that. We have to find out what was unloving about it and ask for forgiveness. We have to do that, and we have to forgive ourselves. So that's where the re repent and forgiveness comes from. Now, but, I should say, but, the people who gave the advice are also responsible. Because they suggested that someone take an unloving action. And this is why we have to be careful of the choices that we make. Why is my camera so ugly like that? It's, it is. I mean, I have sunglasses on, but I hope that's... Oh, I think I know what it is. Hold on a second. It was my screen. <laughs> I said it really low. <laughs> I said it low when I was in bed. So, so the screen was dark. Ah, oh, that's funny. Anyway. Um, so. <laughs> oh my gosh, this morning was crazy. Um, so crazy. Um, okay, so where, where, where was I? Oh, we're responsible for the... The, the unloving um, advice that we give. And uh, this is why I'm very careful in terms of giving people advice. And I always, I always say, hey, do what you will. Don't take my suggestions. I mean, and, and do it because I say do it. I always say, use your, use discernment you know, do what's right for you, use your free will, you're going to use it anyway, whether it's using your free will to listen to me or using your free will to not listen to me, either or, you're, you're using your free will, but I always, you know, put out there, you know, do your own thing, do what's best for you, because at the end, you're going to have to live with your choices, and, you know, the advice, the, the information that I'm giving is, is, I'm just putting it out there for you. I'm not saying you have to live this. I'm not saying, you know, everything that I say. The thing is, you know, some of the things that I say, some of you will never be able to do while you're here on earth. And maybe hundreds or thousands of years from now, you may not be able to do that. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. There's there's two paths. There's a natural love path and then there's um, the divine love path. And they're completely different. Uh, some of them, well, like the divine love path holds some of the natural love um aspects or elements but it exceeds the natural love path and sometimes the things that I say are just impossible for for a person to do at this time in their life and that's fine there's nothing wrong with that don't I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be hard um, on yourself if you can't follow some of the things uh, that I talk about in my videos uh, because you don't you don't have to I mean there is a natural love path and the natural love path is like like people can, the natural love path is, you know, you know, you're you're in your religion, and whatever your belief system, whether it's you know New Age or Christianity or whatever, like if that's the way you want to do it, and you want to live in love, and and, uh, and not have anything to do with you know the relationship with God or anything like that, or receive divine love from God, that's fine. You can. There's nothing wrong with that. 
But the things that I talk about, here, here's the thing. So if you're on, um, on a natural love path, this really isn't about removing your emotional injuries. And so this is how some people, or why some people can be very successful in terms of changing their life, even using the law of attraction, or whatever modalities are out there, uh, modalities, um, uh, fates are out there, or, or guide, guidelines to live by, whatever. Like, you can do that. You can read the Bible, and you can live by that and be a loving individual. You can read the Quran. I think it's called the Quran. You can read the Torah. You can read all of these different books and follow what's in it in order to be a more loving person. But you don't have to remove the emotional injuries. Now, the emotional injuries are, are kind of key because it helps change your experience. But you can counter those experiences by just having love in your, in your soul for man. That's it. You don't have to involve God at all. You don't have to want a relationship with God. You don't have to do any of that. You can just live life being a loving individual, and that's it. Just be loving to thy neighbor. That's it. It's, that's, it's that simple. <clears throat> but if you wanted a relationship with God, you have to remove a lot of these beliefs. In, 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 because some of the, well, the, a lot of beliefs that people hold are false. And so you have to, what are you doing? Are you on the phone? Um, oh my god, they're not like 30 miles an hour back there. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, anyway, you don't have to uh, listen or acknowledge or put into practice, I should say. You don't have to put into practice a lot of the things that I say. Um, because a lot of the things that I say aren't going to benefit you because that's not your goal. If your goal isn't to have a relationship with the Creator, then, then some of the things you shouldn't even put into practice. So take what you need. Discard what you don't need or feel you don't need or want or whatever, you know, and be done with it. But anyway, these people, um, these people, and this is, so what I'm talking about is part of, I, I guess it could be part of natural love, where you care enough about the other person to not harm them, um, or, or care enough about another person to not give them advice to harm another, uh, because... I mean, the bottom line is, when that mother kicked her son out, that son felt a great deal of emotional pain and and felt rejected. And so what happened, because that pain was great, they decided to accept the acceptance from a group of people, even though they didn't have his uh, best interest at heart. And that was proven because they were okay with the idea of what this person was doing that caused that person to murder another. <clears throat> and this is, this is, you know, be careful the advice you give to people. Be careful. If you're not willing to take everyone into consideration and, and if you don't have the ability to help someone see the cause of why they're experiencing what they're experiencing, leave it alone. Just leave it alone. Because what happens is they're going to have their interaction no matter what. Like if they're having a painful, if two people are having a painful interaction, it's going to be that until they figure it out. And you giving advice that's not helping them figure it out is going to harm you. Because you're going to end up giving advice that is going to continue to degrade. It's going to assist them with continuing degrading their soul. So I'll just put it that way. So these two people who are having this interaction are having this interaction due to a degraded soul condition, all right? So even if one of them did not have a degraded soul condition, that interaction would not be happening. So when you have two people who are arguing or, or they're having, you know, a lot of negativity, it's because their soul conditions are degraded. And they are mirroring one another, trying to expose an emotional injury that's without them. Get off. So, um, hold on, because I lost my train of thought when I was trying to get over. Oh, so the greatest soul condition, the, the greatest soul condition. So, what happens is they're having their their interaction, 
it's already degraded. And then you come in, if you're the one who, you know, they may ask you for advice, but you have to know when you don't have the answer. You can't just make up something and just try to, you know, oh, just do this just to stop the pain. That is not going to work. The co Messing with the effect is not going to work. You know, your solution to someone's pain is just, hey, do this to cut it out right now. No. They're just going to have another interaction. And you're, you're interfering with the God's law of attraction. So God's law of attraction and law of compensation and the law of cause and effect are all working together to, to help these people expose something that's within their life that or expose an emotion that's within them that's causing this interaction to happen to begin with. So when you come along and try to give advice and say, oh, you know, it's, you don't have to put up with that, you know, he's a grown man, you know what? No. <laughs> just, I would suggest to just stop that. Just stop it. If, like I said, if you're not able to identify the cause, leave it alone because that advice that you give, and you may not even know the effects of your advice until you pass because at that point you'll be presented with all because we're all presented with all the things that we have ever done that was unloving that we have to ask for forgiveness for we are presented with the list if we choose to look at that list we can choose to ignore the list we can choose to just keep going and not have anything to do with it and people are presented with this option when you first pass. Within the first couple of weeks, you have the option, the ability to deal with these things by these celestial beings. And most people, because of their condition, they don't want to be around these celestial beings because it's too painful to be around them. Because when you're around them, all of your emotions start coming up and it feels painful. Emotionally and physically, you can feel the pain. And because they don't want to deal with this, they don't want to experience this, they end up rejecting the assistance of the celestial beings that approach them af uh, after the transition. So, <clears throat> we are, I mean, everything that I have ever done, like, I've, I've thought about some things, some advice that I've given to people, and, you know, the consequences of that, like, it just wasn't, it just wasn't good. And so I have to ask for forgiveness for that, because I didn't understand. Yet I'm responsible for everything that I've ever done in my life everything every single thing even in back in grammar school you're responsible for those actions even though you didn't understand what you were doing was hurting another so all the bullies are going to have to uh, pay for that for the unloving thing the pain that they cause that other person emotionally um, when you're you know when you tease someone because of what they're wearing I mean this stuff is you know it's there's a lot in um, that happens in grammar school and kids it's just it's just normal in, in, in grammar school you make fun of what people have or don't have you make fun of their clothes you make fun of the way they look you you just you hurt people left and right and and think it's funny and then you you know you grow up and you, you forget about those things but the universe has not forgotten about them at all and you're reminded when you pass you're reminded of these things and you have to ask for forgiveness and most people because I said they they reject the assistance from the, the celestial beings they don't understand why they're in the dark place that they're in see this it's not just about the things you're mindful of it's about the things that you're completely unconscious of the things that you did that you didn't even think were an issue yeah you may be able to say yeah you know I made fun of this kid growing up da 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 and you keep it pushing you know, I hope they're okay. Like, there are people I wonder about. Like, I wonder how people are doing, you know, now, like, as adults. Because that stuff, as now I understand, as children, the emotional injuries that we receive stay with us forever until we get rid of them. And because people don't and children don't or adults don't know this stuff about releasing emotional injuries, they hold it. And they forget about it because it's painful. They just suppress it and they, they, they don't think about it anymore. You know, maybe something may happen. You know, they may see a kid getting bullied and it may bring back, you know, a moment, you know, back in their, their, 
their school years when you know their feelings were hurt but they just think about it it's just a thought but they don't act they don't allow the emotion to come up even though the emotion the awareness of that emotion did come up by looking at that other person and this is like every law of attraction experience is on purpose nothing is by accident nothing nothing in this universe is by accident everything is deliberate every single thing is deliberate God's creation is deliberate your free will is deliberate as you're taking making your act you're taking your actions it's a deliberate <clears throat> The law of attraction that comes to you, the event, it's deliberate. If you see someone and you recognize something, that was deliberate. It doesn't matter if it's someone crossing the street. It could be someone crossing the street that uh, reminds you of someone. That is deliberate. You were at that time, I'm sorry, you were at that place at that time to see that person in that moment. <clears throat> that day you're running late, that's deliberate. There's so many things that are deliberate, and we most people will look at it as coincidence, accident, by chance, and because of this lack of understanding, and understand that lack of understanding is based on a lack of love, and because they don't have that, they're not able to see that. A conscious, a truly awakened conscious person will look at something and ask themselves, why is this happening? Why am I experiencing this? Why is this event happening? Why did I run into this person? Why am I seeing this number over and over and over again? Like the other day, I don't know how many times I saw 666. 666, 666, 666. And I'm like, why am I seeing this number? <laughs> why am I seeing this number all over the place? And I was seeing it like addresses. I was looking at light. They were all over on license plates and I was just catching all of them. Not looking for them, but every time I looked up, there was a 666. And I'm like, ooh, who would want... And some of them were deliberate. Like someone actually put, you know, made their license plate with something and a 666 in it rather than it just being some random number that they were assigned. Like, it, it was crazy. I was just seeing it all over the place. And you know what? I did... I kept... I was like... I asked myself... Why am I seeing this? But you know I never looked it up. I never looked up what that number is. Um, I just never did. And uh, and the reason why is because there is a, something that was precluding me from doing that. And it's my understanding of what 666 is. So, you know, I, w I was taught or have the knowledge that, which is inaccurate but I do have the knowledge that 666 is uh, the mark of the beast because this is you know religious so you know it's the devil and so it's you know evil all that number you know satanic and so there is a obviously there's a fear a childhood fear because I remember <clears throat> when I was younger you know I was taught you know that's that's the number of the devil and so every time I saw that number I would become afraid because I was taught to be afraid of the devil now I'm not afraid of the devil because I, I understand intellectually I understand that the devil is not real like Satan is not real however the emotion that was instilled in me when I was a child is still there and so that emotion was precluding me from even having anything to do with that number just like when I first started listening to Abraham Hicks and I realized that Abraham Hicks was a spirit that was being channeled. I turned it off immediately and I didn't go back to that in, for like two weeks. But I had to use logic to understand what was going on. I had to override the emotions that were in me that, that, stopped, that precluded me from continuing watching what I was watching. So <clears throat> even though I'm 40 something years old, it's like, I still have this childhood fear of the 666. And so I have to get rid of that. I have to get rid of it. And so, you know, I didn't look it up. So anyway, um, but I did ask myself, why is this, why am I seeing this number? Because I knew it was significant. I just didn't take the time to understand what it, what it represented. And it was only for that one day. And I was like, what's going on? Now I've noticed some, some differences in myself lately, <clears throat> which is why I haven't been making videos. Um, but um, I'll talk about that another time. But uh, anyway, these choices, we're responsible for them, people. Every single thing we're responsible for. There isn't anything we're not responsible for. And so we have to be accountable for these things that we do. Don't try it, lady. 
people, you think he's slick. Y'all don't know me. You do not know me. <laughs> Especially today. My, <laughs> I woke up like, my alarm went off at four, and I was like, okay, 20 more minutes. So I set the timer for 20 more minutes, and it went off, and I turned it off, it went back to sleep. And so it was like 5.28, I think, when I like caught myself and woke up. Well, I'm supposed to be out of the house by 6, you know. I haven't done anything with my clothes. I don't know what I'm wearing. I haven't had my coffee, haven't had breakfast. And so I'm running a little late. And uh, <laughs> this lady, she's so angry behind me. <clears throat> she didn't want to let me in, so... I just, you know, forced myself in because I was technically the next one supposed to go in. You know how you stagger, you know, when the line is, the lane is merging? One car on one side goes in, the other car. Anyway, she didn't, she didn't want to, so I just, I just pushed myself right on in there <clears throat> since I had the right of way. And so she's angry and so she's, like that movie angry black woman she's an angry white woman <laughs> now she really stuck back there heifer whatever <laughs> my mom used to call me with that heifer <laughs> anyway um so anyway I you know woke up you know all kinds of late and whatever so I usually don't iron my clothes I throw them in the dryer that's why I buy <laughs> that's how lazy I am I I buy these wrinkle free or easy care clothes so all I gotta do is throw them in the dryer and you know be done with it and all the wrinkles are gone so anyway um I usually buy wrinkle free but I made that a mistake by buying easy care which you need a little ironing so I had to pull up the iron this morning and uh so I'm ironing, uh, and I put my Keurig, my cake up in the thing, and at the end I heard some go, Psh! and I'm like, what was that, you know? But I'm like half asleep, so I didn't, I didn't, you know, pay any attention. I just wanted to hurry up and get these pans ironed, and um, so I go to get my coffee, and I pull, you know, I grab the cup, and all these little black things are floating around, and I'm like, like my vision is not that great right now because. <laughs> <laughs> I just opened my eyes, you know? So, um, I'm like, what is this little black thing? I'm like, is it coffee ground? Because I usually don't get coffee grounds on my coffee from a, a K cup. So I'm like, okay. And, um, I'm like, is it a, are they bugs? Like, what's going on? What's floating in my coffee? So I, rec I, you know, finally determined that it's a uh, coffee ground. And, um, so I get the little, um, what do you call that thing? Like a sifter. And, uh, you know, poured in another cup to, you know, sip the, uh, the coffee grounds, and, uh, I opened the Keurig, and there's coffee grounds just all over the place, like, I guess it backed up, and so it was overflowed or whatever, and that's why I got the coffee grounds, so, which is fine, because I just bought a new, um, Nespresso machine, which I'm so excited about, I bought it, what, Thursday, Wednesday, or Thursday of last week, but I haven't opened it yet, so, um, I'll do that, but anyway, you know, all that was going on. I'm running late. Like, I'm half hour behind. Um, you know, coffee's not working right. I'm ironing, taking more time than I usually do. You know, all this stuff's going on. So, today was just kind of crazy. Cray, cray, crazy. So, dealing with this lady this morning. Uh-uh. Like, <laughs> my true soul condition is coming out. It's like, look, don't play with me. Because that's my true soul condition. Is like, don't play with me. <laughs> so, you know, whatever. That's my truth. So there's a lot of anger in, in my soul. I can admit that. Um, but it doesn't always come out. But there are instances where it does, like today. Like, I woke up on time. I could I could have gotten up, but I didn't. So I have to recognize that this whole event is happening on purpose so that I recognize what's within my soul. So every time you get angry, every time you get irritated, annoyed, sad, mad, whatever it is, every time you have that experience... <clears throat> um, every time you have that experience it's to show you or expose what's within your soul so I had to ask myself you know what's within my soul what's, what's in there what's in that that container of yours Bradley um, 
So, like I said, every time you have an experience, ask yourself what's going on. Um, yeah. I think that's it. Choices. Be mindful of your choices. Be aware that everything that you say to someone, you're affecting someone. You're using energy to affect someone. You're just using it in terms of vocabulary. You're, you know, um, <clears throat> you may, here's the thing. You may not have kicked that, you know, like the, in terms of that lady, you may not have kicked their son out, but you gave the advice of your desire, your will. And this is why we have to be mindful because every time we give advice, every time we give, um, uh, in, what an advice, uh, what was the other word I was looking for? Every time we give someone, uh, some type of information on how to proceed, you know, these people are so crazy with their, um, there are some angry people on the road, me being included sometimes, but I mean, I don't purposely do things to like mess with people, but, um, these, some of these people are just, hmm. Is going on up here? I don't know. It's red on my map, <clears throat> and I'm on the wrong side. I can't make a. I cannot make an illegal U-turn. <laughs> oh, it wouldn't be illegal. I think there's a dotted lines in the center median there. Um. Anyway, um, when we give advice, we are what are we, what we're doing is we're giving. And you want to be asshole too. I've got time for your madness, you stupid fool. <clears throat> Nobody got time for that. You see that person straddling two lines, like trying to... He wanted to get in, but he didn't want to get in enough to let me get in. You know, people just tripping this morning. Whatever. <laughs> that's why he's two cards behind me. You see, that's what happens. That's what happens when you do wrong, when you do, when you do evil things. Um... So, oh, the lady's yelling in the car. <clears throat> Maybe she's the culprit. Um, let me see. So, yeah, when we give advice or make recommendations or suggestions for people, make sure it's in harmony with love. You know, make sure that what you're doing isn't going to darken your soul in addition to darkening someone else's soul. And so this is... I mean, you may see you may see it as being something small and insignificant, um, you know. But allow people to have their own free will and do what they want to do, based on what they want to do, you know. And give them give them the option. Like when I when I make a recommendation to someone, I would say, look, this is it's your it's your free will, you know, to do whatever you want to do, um, but this is what's going on and this is why I, you know, I believe this should happen. And I will point out like the cause, like any, every, every time there's some kind, there's always something going on at work with these people. Um, because you know, they're, they're, they're social workers and they're dealing with, you know, they have a, a team who's dealing with one, one individual client and you have, you know, the therapist who has an idea of how things should go. You have a case manager who, who you know, ha who have uh, an idea about how they want to do things, and then you have a peer advocate who has, you know, their their idea about what should happen, and all these different ideas in terms of in terms of you know what these clients should should or should not be doing, and so there's a lot of conflict, you know, because they just can't agree on something, and so the problem with this is <clears throat> is there some kind of event going on? Like what in the world? Um. The problem with this is, um, oh, so there are a lot of uh, disagreements that come up. And so when I'm talking to someone and someone's having an issue with a coworker, you know, I know exactly why it's going on. I know why the other person is doing what they're doing. And so I have to break it down to them. I'm like, you know, this is why this person is doing this. You know, this is, but, you know, it doesn't have anything to do with you. But you have to be mindful of this. You know, and like I said, they're social workers, so they can understand what I'm saying. And when they, they see the full picture, and when they see, because I bring them into it, I'm like, this is what you're doing. This is what they're doing. And this is why there isn't any resolve. And they're like, you know what? That makes so much sense. Thank you. Blah, 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 blah. And I don't give them advice in terms of how to handle it. I just... I just, um, 
<clears throat> all these all these cars got yep all of them boom 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 that don't make no sense people acting so crazy in the morning time i'm telling you I'm telling you I'm telling you <clears throat> oh i'm sorry lady i didn't know you were trying to get in there um <clears throat> so you know when i when i i talk to people they it, I never pick a side because there's there's no side to pick. In, in anything, there is never a side. There's always just a reason why it's happening. There's a, there's a cause to the division. And when you look at the world, when you look at the politics, the way things are set up, people are, are they understand division. They understand Democrat. They understand Republican. They understand black. They understand white. They understand races. They understand uh, uh, teams like, you know, the Bills versus the whoever and the Patriots versus the whoever and the, the Raiders. Are the Raiders still around? <laughs> and the 49ers and all these different the Steelers. Like, these are all teams or all divisions or aspects um, of some of a divide. And if you really want to understand the world, you want to understand the root of the problem, it's never going to be one side or the other, ever. It's never going to be Christianity versus um, atheist or agnostic or Buddhist or Hinduism or whatever you want to call it. It's never going to be that, ever, ever, ever. It's always going to be the middle thing, which is the cause, the reason for what's taking place. It's never going to be a side. And so when I'm talking to people and, and I'm, you know, helping them to understand or I should say explaining what's going on because I can't make them understand. But I explain exactly what's going on at the root. This is why this is going on. This is why that's going on. And they're like, I see it. They see their part and they also see their part. Like they see the reason why. I mean, because it's really interesting with these social workers and, you know, how one will will look at another and, and think to themselves, <clears throat> oh, this person, and blah, 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 and this person, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah, they may be doing that, but do you understand that this is this is why they're, they're doing that, because they're responding to you? Well, I know. Well, yeah, you may know that you're doing that, but do you understand that you are really the cause of, of why this is going on? It's like this person is responding to you in a negative way because you don't have confidence in them and so now you're hurting their feelings and now their attitude towards you is different and now you're saying that they have an attitude so this is what i'm talking about like you have to look at the root cause of what's going on so when you give advice when you share information with someone in an attempt to try to help them understand what you're doing understand what you're saying try to understand the cause not just the side you know, all these people, you know, you want to support your friends, you know, this happened, I saw this a lot growing up, you know, where there's relationship problems, and, you know, you want to give advice to your friend, and you're like, oh, that person, no, he's no good girl, you know, just leave him, or just, and then what happens is they say, they say, use him, you know, just get, you know, have him take you, get your nails done, or go shopping, or just use him for as long as you can, now, that advice, it's not even advice, but whatever you want to call it, that information or that recommendation that they gave just degraded their own soul because they suggested that the person do something unloving and it's degrading the soul of the person that's going to use the other person, which is an unloving thing. This is why you don't take sides. You don't take sides because I guarantee you, you do not know the whole situation. If you do not know the principles uh, uh, God's laws and how they work then you don't know the whole situation if there's ever a disagreement a disagreement if you know God's laws and you can understand exactly the root of the problem where it's coming from without knowing what's going on because you know the the consequences of of, uh, of actions you know what was that is that who I think it is no it's not um, you already know the consequences of certain actions based on the on on the universal laws these universal laws tell you hey this is going to happen if you do this this is how i know because i know i know the laws i know the consequences to these laws i know the consequences to unloving things i need to order breakfast hold on opening camera <laughs> i'm back <laughs> um so i had to place my order for breakfast so 
yeah, anyway, with, in relationships, I mean, and we do this a lot with our friends. Uh, we give advice. Um, on, it's, And usually the advice that people give, it's advice as a payback. You know, it's either payback or just, you know, leave the situation, you know, just leave, you know, whatever. Um, but you never help them understand why why they're having relationship problems in the, in the first place. And this is the issue. Like, if you don't understand it, the easiest thing to say to someone is just either leave or get them back or get her back or whatever. Retaliate. It's either leave or retaliate, one or the other. But there really isn't any true understanding. And the reason why there isn't is because people don't understand. People don't understand relationships. They don't understand the problems within relationships. That's common. That is so common. You don't understand the relationships. You don't understand the problems within the relationships. And yet, people are trying to give advice about relationships. And generally, these are the people who are in rocky ones themselves. So I'm not sure how they feel qualified. <laughs> I don't know how they feel qualified to give relationship advice when theirs is falling apart themselves. <laughs> and they'll look at it differently. They'll say, oh, well, your situation is different than mine. You know, maybe you guys are just irritated with one another and you guys are just nitpicky and maybe the other person is, is experiencing someone cheating on them or whatever. Uh, but <laughs> they'll look at it as being something completely different and it's not. It's all the same. It's all the same. There is a lack of understanding. There's a lack of compassion and nobody wants to. And this is interesting because if you're in a relationship and you claim to love the person, then you would want to help that person any way possible. Like, you want to help them. Like, hey, babe, what's going on? You know, I noticed you've been, you know, distant lately. You know, can we talk about it? You know, what's going on with you? Is there something that I did? You know, you know, be honest with me. I can take it. You know, let me know if I'm doing something. Because if you're in a relationship like that and you're open and you have a willingness and openness and willingness to know what you're doing what you're doing then you're in a good place and if you encourage someone else to be honest and, and forthcoming then you're being loving to that person you're saying hey express yourself and let me know what's 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 ailing you and if it's me then let me know what I'm doing that is ailing you you see what I'm saying? Like, there's an openness. But generally, what happens, people just don't care. They're like, oh, well, he's just being an asshole. And he's just being difficult. Or she's being difficult. And she, you know, she just, ah, blah, 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 blah. You know, and nothing can get fixed. Because people don't understand why people are doing the things that they're doing. And it's so easy. It's easy. And all you have to know is what love is. That's really the only thing you need to know is what love is. Like, not your definition of love, not what you grew up knowing or believing what love is. It's the true definition of love, God's definition of love. Because once you understand that this is God's universe, and so God's definition of love is the only definition that matters, then you'll want to learn what that definition is. And once you learn what that definition is, you can control so many things in your life. And the reason why you would control it is because you have an understanding as to what's going on. You would have a universal understanding as to what's going on in God's universe. That's that's it. That's how I'm able to figure out what's going on with people, why people are experiencing the things that they're experiencing, what's going to happen based on what they're choosing to experience, based on their free will. Like I can predict. I predicted so many things. I don't I didn't even know, you know, what was going on in someone's relationship. Oops. Someone got hit. I heard that. I heard that. Boom. Because <laughs> people are on their phones. <laughs> they're looking down. And they see the car is moving on the side of them. And they think that the car in front of them is moving as well. And they, boom. <laughs> These people, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Woo. Anyway. Um, so. <laughs> that was someone's law of attraction. Woo. Law of attractions, you know, you use, sometimes are not so great. The good thing is, 
if you're listening to this video, then you, the next time you have something that happens that's not so great, you'll ask yourself, why did this just happen? At least you're making an attempt, an attempt to learn and understand what the heck is going on in your life so you can stop it. Oh, geez, just stop it. <laughs> that's the whole point, is to stop your pain. So if you're not asking why is this happening, you're never going to stop your pain. Ever. You're never going to stop it. Never going to stop it. All right, everyone. Um, I hope you guys have a, a great Tuesday. And uh, is it ready yet? I can usually see my order on the counter. Oh, it just finished. <laughs> um, yeah. So, hope, like I said, I hope you have a great one. And um, I'll talk to you guys later. And uh, that's it. All right. Bye now.